Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft and today we're going to be painting a tiger in pastels on velour using just four colours, including black and white. To begin with, I've sketched out our uh, subject, our tiger, with a charcoal pencil. This is nice and light, so it means if we want to change anything, we can fairly easily rub that down or paint over it with no problems. Um, so the beginning part, as always, is going to be our tonal sketch. So we're going to reinforce this uh, charcoal sketch with a hard black pastel. Going no darker than sort of uh, mid to dark grey at this stage. Because we can add final darks and final details later on. So it's a two part tonal sketch. First of all, just refining the sketch a little bit. Lots of markings and stripes to do, obviously. And then add some tone to create form. So I'll start with the ears and work down. Uh, using a slightly rounded corner of the hard black pastel and let's get the, the soft velvety edge to the back of the ear on the far side and again on the near side get the, begin to get the shape of the ear indentation there we have the flap of skin or the pouch of skin at the back. So just shapes for the moment, lines and so on. So I'm going to begin the process of creating the hairs growing into the centre of the ear just by cutting it out almost with the pastel like so. And then where the fur joins the base of the ear. And then the, oh, just the inner part of the here on the opposite side, then we'll start to work on the markings. So I'm going to have uh, a fairly strong light coming down on this side. You can imagine it's a uh, dawn or something like that, um, or even a sunset. So a nice, striking, uh, dramatic light on this side. So where the light's catching the edge of the face, I don't want to do a hard black line. So all, I, all you need to do, especially when you're painting tigers or anything with stripes or spots, so first of all just concentrate on the markings, get the markings in and then you've pretty much got your animal. And as always when you begin to paint or draw fur, think about the length, direction and thickness of the fur. Even at this early stage you can create like a fur map just by having the strokes going in the appropriate direction, appropriate length and so on. <clears throat> now, as you work through, you can either rub that pastel into the paper to fix it in the paper, fix it in the fibres, or you can wait until you've done the whole lot. I generally like to rub as I work through. So we're going to work from the outside in. I want to get all the markings in before this uh, charcoal pencil rubs away. Because if you're doing this at home from one of the workshop kits, then you don't have to worry about that because there'll be all these markings and everything will be pre printed on the paper for you. Save you a big jump. So, one of the reasons I like to work with a limited palette, and we'll talk about the, the colour palette a little bit later on, is because it actually gives you more chance. To think about tonal values, which are one of the more most important aspects of a painting. The tonal values, which give you depth, which gives you form, gives you a sense of distance, etc. And just by using one or even two colours, three colours perhaps on top of that, then you can keep life fairly simple. Don't have to make too many decisions about colour. Um, Plus the fact, of course, it's a lot cheaper. So if you don't want to spend a fortune on pastels or paint, think about your tonal underpainting, your tonal sketch first, and use a limited palette on top of that. And you can actually create some quite dramatic atmospheric paintings with a limited palette, as hopefully we'll see at the end of this. So bit by bit, markings are going in. I'm going to pay particular attention to those around the eyes. They're going to be a little bit 
sharper, the dilly eyes suffered later on, the mirror is a little bit sharper, a little bit darker later on as well, that will draw attention to the important part, which is the eyes, arguably the important part of course. And don't necessarily think of these as all stripes. We tend to think of tigers having stripes. We think of them as markings because they, they are different shapes, different thicknesses and so on. And if you th tend to think of them as stripes, then you can probably make them all too uniform. And it's important to get the shapes, the curves of these markings, especially in areas like this around the eyebrows because it does help you produce the shape of the eyebrows. And then notice the fur on the forehead a bit shorter going in a generally upwards direction. So it doesn't really matter whether you go from sort of root to tip or the other way around when you're sketching it out. The important thing is to get the appropriate shapes and the length and the direction of the fur, the fur map. So again, a little bit more careful around the eyes, the eyebrows. We have the side of the cheek, so a little bit of uh, a roof, if you like, around the cheeks. And this is the, the base of that roof, which will extend a little bit further out. Uh, then we have the nose, Got a couple of sight plans just above the corner of the nose. Cats of all sizes have their Pretty much the same shape nose. Looks like a little triangle or a little heart shape. A little rim of fur growing just over the tip of the nose like that. Keep it nice and soft. Dimple in the middle. And that's fairly standard, so it's a good thing to practice cat's noses. Because apart from the size, obviously, then they're pretty much all the same. Get the shape of the mouth. Always, again, same with small cats, you'll always see that little rounded curve of the bottom lip showing through. Again, a few little markings or scent glands in the chin. And we have the whisker follicles on tigers, of course. The whisker follicles are very, very dark, surrounded by very dark fur, black fur almost. And they're useful because they help to show the shape of the cheeks, the roundness of the cheeks. So a lot of dark fur around here, very thick dark fur, so don't skimp on it, make it thick. We have this huge pack of dark fur, huge patch, I beg your pardon, a huge patch of dark fur right at the base of the cheek. That extends down into the chin, almost, almost one solid black shape. So then we'll do the eyes. I'm going to use a slightly sharper corner for the eyes just to try and get a bit more of a precise shape. So upper eyelid, pupil looking down towards bottom left, the roundness of the eyeball, and then corner of the eye coming down into the tear duct. Tear duct is like a channel Grayer in the middle, darker around the edges. And opposite side, then we just have a little bit of the eye showing. The pupil is about here. And we still have the same dark eyelashes, lowering, and just all meeting down to the edge of the nose about there. A few more sort of very loose, 
stripes or markings just below the chin. That's going to help us fade that out a little bit. So I don't want it to be too sharp around here. It's going to sort of fade out look. A little bit of fur texture around the rough. Now we can start to add some tonal values. So we have our preliminary sketch. That's the first part of our tonal underpainting or our tonal sketch. The second part is adding some uh, tones to create form. So roundnesses, so we get highlights and shadows and mid-tones all together create form. So again I'm going to do this in <coughs> two parts. So using the flat of the pastel, the first thing to do is create the mid-tone and then add on top of that to create a dark tone. The paper itself will be our highlight for now, our lightest tone. Always go for lighter tones than you think you might need to begin with because you can always add more over the top. It's very difficult to take it off once it's on the wall. So there's the shade, general shade of the inside of that ear. Now I can go over that again to create a darker centre using the same amount of pressure. Don't worry about details around the edges if they become obscured, we'll put those back later on. Uh, a lot of this side of the face is going to be in shadow anyway. So what I'm going to do is think about, first of all, the red-brown fur. Um, you can see from the original photograph that the white fur is not all white, it's kind of creamy. This is a Sumatran tiger, and Sumatran tigers are a smaller than uh, your Siberian tiger, or Amur tiger, as they're called now. And not so much white in the fur as your Amur tigers, or even the Bengal tigers, they're a little bit more yellowish. So even where we have white fur, I'm going to put a, or whitish fur, I'm going to put a, a light tone over there, especially on the shadow side. So. Quite simply, stroke with the flat of the pastel in the direction of the fur. So if you do get any marks from the edge of your pastel, they're going in the right direction. So don't forget the eyes as well. The eyes are set well back. A lot of people always forget to put a tone in the eyes. Well, they do need a tone because they're set well back. I give that a good rub. So that's our light grey tone apart from the inner ear there. Now I want a, a shadow, a definite shadow side. So that's going to go around underneath the eyebrows, along the side of the nose and so on. So carefully you can shape, or begin to shape the roundness of the eyebrow with the shadow around it. So again using the side of the pastel underneath the brow, so the brow is there in the forehead coming down to the bridge of the nose. See that all gives you now that sort of rounded form. Inside of the tear duct again, don't worry about losing edges of tear ducts and things like that, we can bring those back later on. A little bit of shadow there, around the cheekbone. Make sure it's nice and soft. Give it a good rub, especially around the edges, to soften the edges. And the shadow on the nose is down to about here, so the bridge of the nose that is. And again, a lot of this side will be in shadow. So you can darken the areas of the red-brown fur on this side as well. <coughs> Centre of the forehead, always a little dip there, and that's red-brown fur. <coughs> shadow around here, softer shadow where we've got paler fur, it's all kind of yellowish anyway. Coming down into the, the V shape of the chest. So that should do for our general shading. Again you can always add more shading later on once you've added the colour if you feel you need to. So the next thing <coughs> is to apply some base colours. I'm going to begin with uh, the background in this case, because what I want to do is make sure that I've got the background behind the tiger when I do it. So I'm um, using a standard cadmium orange soft pastel, which is 
that one. So I'm going to just create a general sense of uh, the lighting, the atmosphere, with this orange in the background. So starting on the left hand side. You can do any kind of texture you like. In this case, I'm just doing vertical strokes. If you want to create a more natural looking texture, you can use sort of circular motions. Uh, any kind of texture you want, really. What I want is just a kind of backdrop to show the, the overall atmosphere of the painting. Maybe dawn or sunset or something like that. So a little bit of nice, vibrant orange in the background should help portray that. Just going over the edge of your tiger, don't forget just to make sure you don't get a a line of sand kind of paper around it. Give that a fairly good rub because it's a softer pastel. You need to rub that into the ball so make, to make it stick. So there's our setting, our background. Now the overall colour I'm going to use for the tiger, the red-brown fur, at least in the tiger, is going to be the darker orange. This is a dark orange. Uh, it's kind of a golden brown. It's just a darker version of what we've, what we've just used. So this is going to go pretty much where we've got the red brown fur. So I start around the base of the ears. And work our way around. Don't be too fussy about where you put this colour. Just to generally in the area where you think you, you're going to need it. If it overlaps a lighter area or darker area, it really doesn't matter. But you want the, the base colours to actually combine almost seamlessly. So to begin with, I'm just looking at the red-brown areas. I'm going to go over the tip of the nose as well. Again, apply it lightly so you have then the option to add more colour if you want to, or you can just leave it as it is. But if you apply it lightly, you should give yourself the option. So go over the eye as well, both eyes, so that sort of gives you that nice amber colour then. Um, the other base we're going to use is the standard orange. So only two colours in this, apart from the black and the white. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in, very light touch where we have the more yellowy, creamy fur. And that, what that will do, that will give me a, a bit of a stronger colour base for when I put white over the top. So when I use white over the top of that, it won't be bright white, it will be a nice sort of soft, peachy, almost yellowish colour. It's more in keeping with uh, our subject. So everything now has two colours in it, the standard orange and the dark orange, plus our tones. So note when you add the base colours, the tones get muted, uh, the detail gets muted a little bit. Now is the time to bring them back. So, detail stage. Working with the black again, we decide which details you want to bring out and which we want to leave fairly loose. Well, for me, generally, it's this area. It's the head, ears, eyes, nose, mouth, and anything on a, the same sort of plane. So, back with the black, rounded corner, the velvety edge of the ear on the far side, and bring that down into the top of the head. And same there. Just a little hint of black fur coming over the edge of the ear. Tigers do have black fur on the back of the ears, together with a white spot, which a lot of uh, cats that live in those kind of environments, leopards, cheetahs and so on, when they're going through long grass, they need the white spots to act as guides for their young ones who can follow them. And they're often called follow me spots. Obviously we can't see those white spots in this one. We can just see this the edge of the black fur 
coming over the ear. So working from the forehead down this time, it's going to strengthen some of these markings. Remembering length and direction of the fur. I mean, there may be almost solid looking markings, but around the edges you are going to see the marks of the pastel, so just make sure they're going in the right direction. I often say the wonderful thing about tigers is they have stripes. If you get all the stripes or the markings correct in the right place, then you've got your tiger or your tigger. And then conversely, the terrible thing about tigers is they've got stripes. You'll know what I mean when you've painted enough of them. So a little bit softer on the right hand side where the light's coming from, and a little bit stronger on the left hand side, which is the shadow side. When the light hits these darker stripes, it's going to make them softer anyway, less visible. And the light will shine on the fur. Get a little bit more careful around the eye. Of course, if you have time, <coughs> you can add more layers what we're doing now, more layers to the fur, more precise detail on your markings and so on. You don't have to. You can leave it fairly loose, fairly painterly, as we're doing with this one. But if you do like to do a lot of detail, then just repeat these layers. So we're filling a little Shading in the tear duct. And continue with the markings, bring them back. And when I say repeat, of course, what I mean is you can add colour over this if you want to add more colour, and then add more fur, add more colour, add more fur, and so on. And if you repeat that several times, two or three times, ten times, you will get more fur texture if that's what you want to achieve. But if you don't, then just leave it as one layer, as we're doing in this, and that will be plenty enough. Now give that a little rub as we work through. So you can see that the markings, the stripes, are beginning to reveal themselves again. That's why you don't have to spend, or well, you shouldn't spend too much time in the sketching stage on things like this because now is the time to detail them. They will get buried underneath your layers of colour if you do too much. And you only have to redo them anyway. Not far off, thank goodness. And you decide how dark or how light you want your markings to be. Always remember though, if you've got a softer lighting, as we have in this one, this is a soft early morning, late afternoon light, we're trying to create the light itself, it will be softer. So therefore your shadows will be softer, your highlights will be softer and so on. Not as glaring as it would be in full, midday sun. So we're just going to fade or blur the outer markings out a little bit, not too refined, not too detailed. And then we have the eye on the other side. Beautiful about there, lower rim here, and a white bit of fur underneath, or a pale bit of fur underneath. And a little soft shadow around the start of the roof. And the 
nostril again. Remember the nostril, the hard line of the nostril is always this bit. Underneath it just fades out from the nostril hole into the cheek. So it's not a hard edge all the way around, just this part. A little rim of dark fur above the tip of the nose and the mouth. softer follicle stripes on the right hand side, a little bit stronger on the left hand side where it's in shadow. Remember they're quite thick, especially when they go to the outer edge of the cheek. And the final part down here. That's all our markings back again. So what I'm going to do before we approach the final highlights is just tackle the, the eye. A little few, few more flecks in the chin. We'll tackle the eye, this is it, plural, and then we'll put our highlights on after that. So let's look at this eye first. We have an overall base colour, it's a kind of amber colour, so we're using a dark orange over the pupil as well, and the same on that one there, just a hint of the coloured part, the iris, that's all we need on there. Uh, then we've got to think about highlights and reflections. So if our light's coming from the right hand side, this way, then what it's going to do is going to light up the iris on the opposite side, that's the coloured part of the eye. So for that I'm going to use the standard orange. I'm just going to a little curve on the eyeball, on the iris, opposite to where your light's coming from. And then what I'll do before I put the reflection on is just take our black, sharpen up the details, so we'll dab in the pupil. Now we've got the colour in. Sharpen up a little bit around the curve of the eyeball and the lower rim. I want the eye to be in focus. Be a little bit darker. And then we'll just sharpen up the eye on the other side a tad as well. And then our reflection. Well, reflection won't necessarily be white. Uh, that would represent the strong daylight. So what I'm going to do is use the orange again, following the light down, maybe this sort of angle to the right of the pupil, just put a little dab of orange in there to represent our uh, early morning or late evening sun and then a touch of white on top of that to make it a sort of pale orange. That would do nicely for our reflection. <coughs> so that brings it on to our final highlights. So as of yet we have no white fur or whitish fur. What we've got is a, a base, color, base coat, base color of the dark orange and the standard orange. So if we use the white softly on top of that, it will uh, dull it a little bit. It will warm it up a little bit because uh, we don't want it to be too bright white. What I'll do is I'll start with the ears. So we've got a little edge that fur around the edge of the ears is whitish, creamy, I suppose, in real life. Bring a few hairs in towards the center of the ear. But note if you do this with a rounded part of your hard white pastel, and keep it nice and soft, then I'll just pick up some of the colour that's underneath. It'll just warm it up a little bit. And around a little pouch there, cutaneous pouch, a flap of skin at the joint of the ear. And of course we've got the eyebrows. The eyebrows are paler and an Amir tiger. Siberian tiger as they used to be known, they're quite white. And our Sumatran tiger, they're quite sort of yellowish, creamy. So again, not too strong. Now we can start to see that we're going to round us of the eyebrow by putting that sort of creamy white in. Below the eye, we'll have that pale patch of fur below the eye. A lot of Big cats do have that. People say it's to reflect the sun from their eyes when they're hunting. The eyebrow on the opposite side, pale fur underneath, and 
and then just around going from sort of dark orange to orange to light here some soft pale fur around the edges of the face and the rough so I'm keeping these strokes quite thick as you can see because I want them to be I don't want them to take over I want those to be around almost blurred around the edges and again a rounded part of the hard white pastel gives us a softer mark so there's pale fur around the cheeks and the chin in between those dark whisker follicles Chin. So softly to begin with. I always uh, maintain when I'm doing workshops and demonstrations that painting isn't over until you put your final highlights on, and none so true as in a case like this. <coughs> so as you can see, it's still it's a fairly representative portrait of a tiger, but not much in the way of exciting tones or highlights or anything dramatic yet. But when we want to, we can actually bring that to life in a completely different way <coughs> by thinking about your very final highlights, how you're going to approach those. We could of course use uh, white uh, for the final highlights and that might be appropriate for uh, a strong daylight. Uh, but in this case, uh, because we, we've decided that we want to do a kind of sunset, or early morning, that we maybe change the lighting in your photograph, then choose the highlight that's appropriate to your light source. In this case, our dramatic um, cadmium orange. And this is going to really give a, a complete boost to the finish of the painting. It's going to really lift our tiger off the back. Starting with the ears, a little bit of orange colour just inside the ears now. What I'm doing is, is pressing on a little bit harder with this, so don't be afraid of it. It needs to be dramatic. If you're worried about it at all, then do it in a couple of lightish layers. But always remember, this final highlight is going to be what catches people's eyes when they look at it in an exhibition or on a wall in your living room or something like that. They're going to see the highlights first to make sure that it's doing its job. So a little bit of a highlight on the edge of the roof on the outside. And then the top of the head, again that's going to really lift it off the background. And then the fur that's catching the light. So if we think about it, we have a shadow side on this side where my hand is, on this side it's going to be highlighted. So we want that light just to drop more or less on this part of the head. So you can make the decision yourself, or you can just take clues from your original uh, reference. If you think about it in basic terms like uh, drawing a ball, and you want to put some highlights on that ball, that sphere, then you can't just put a highlight around the edge, of course that's highlighting a disc. So if you bring your highlights over, imagine that's a ball, highlights come over to maybe the centre of the sphere and then fade out towards the left hand side. That's the kind of approach you want to take with this. So your highlight is coming over this side, fading out onto the left. So it means that you don't have to be too reliant on your reference photographs when you Think about your highlights. So we'll work around the edge of the rough. Again, that's going to catch a lot of light. It's a sort of pale, pale yellowish colour. It'll really give us some impact on that. Uh, in between some of these darker stripes, markings. We have the red brown fur in particular. And then the eyebrow on the right hand side, that's really going to pick up that light, give it that wonderful shape around the cheekbone, 
anything that's sort of protruding, cheekbones, eyebrows, things like that, pick those up with your dramatic highlight and that will reinforce that shape. A little bit on the brow, just coming down to the bridge of the nose, again, help reinforce those round shapes. We can have a little touch on the cheekbone on that side. Again, just to reinforce that roundness. And then the nose itself, so the edge of the nose. I always draw the outline of the nose first, make sure it's the right shape. And then, as with our ball, work back. So we'll work back, imagining this nose is rounded, so we've got a highlight on that side, coming over the roundness of the nose, then fading out on the opposite side. So that's what we'll do. Got the edge, we've got the line that we want. Now it's just a matter of bringing that over as far as we need it to go. And roughly the center of the bridge of the nose will do. And see that gives us that lovely broad shape for the bridge of the nose. A couple of little soft highlights on the tip of the nose. And then just coming in between whisker follicles on that pale fur. You might get a touch on here. You have to do, make your own decision sometimes. You might get a touch there. Uh, touch around pale chin. Into the neck. This again is just going to be a, a fade out approach. We have a hint of the neck coming down into the chest. That's about there. A touch more colour behind the ear on that side, just to fade that out. And the final thing is to put some whispers on. So, hard white pastel, sharp corner, lots of whiskers. Tigers do have lots of whiskers. There. But one thing they all have in common is that shorter and finer at the front, longer and thicker towards the back. So we'll take that approach. Use a sharp corner. Stroke in some shorter, finer ones at the front, gradually getting a little bit longer and thicker towards the back. So, good, purposeful, confident stroke, but you don't leave it like that. What you need to do there is rub away the base of the whiskers, the roots if you like, and just go over with a tiny touch of black, just to bury the roots even more. At the same time, you can just sort of touch up some of these whisker follicles. Then that gives you the appearance of the whiskers growing out of those areas of whisker follicles rather than laid on top of. The whiskers on the right hand side are going to catch a little bit more light so they can be a little bit stronger. We've probably got more whiskers than I'm actually doing here but we do have a lot. Again, just rub away the base and a touch of grey in this case using a black pastel just to the base so we can't see where the pastel starts we we'll just see where it ends and then I think we'll call that one finished so we'll sign it uh, I hope you enjoyed watching don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel details coming uh, on the screen now for more free tutorials um, don't forget, of course, you can always order materials set for this and uh, some of the others and have a go at home. Do send in your finished paintings, if you will, to my Facebook page so we can see what you've been up to. Uh, details on the screen now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.